Hi, this is David Stearman, and you're listening to my Up Podcast. Suffice it to say, I've been busy and preoccupied this week. I know most of y'all know the details, so there's no need to go into all that here. So, praying about what to post, I feel the most peace about sharing this one from a few years back, about how I got born again. Or I guess I could say about how God friended me, because that's kind of what being born again is, becoming a friend and even a child of God. Anyway, I hope this one's a big blessing to you, because it's through the new birth that we truly become not only God's children, but also as friends. And that's a big deal. So here's how God friended me. Today I want to talk about being born again. Yeah, that's simple. We're getting that simple. Well, as you know, my podcast is never really very complicated. But seriously, this one's going to be a little different. Today, I want to talk about how I got born again. My own experience, because I think there's something very powerful, powerful, powerful in the born again experience. Now, I didn't grow up in a Christian family. My parents did go to church some. I even remember when I was very small going to vacation Bible school. I hated it. I was really bored. It was too structured for me. See, I grew up surrounded by nature. And for me, nature was very exciting. Also, nature was very unrestricting and free. I wasn't a wild child. I mean, I didn't grow up in a cave. It was a suburban neighborhood, but we were right out on the fringe of suburbia. So all around were fields and woods and ponds and lakes and farms and just animals and creatures. And I grew up with that, and I loved that. Even as a very small child, I would wander those fields, and I would catch all the kinds of insects and butterflies I could, make collections, try to keep them as pets. I tried to catch birds, and hey, I succeeded. I caught a robin when I was like seven years old. And uh, we climbed up in trees, me and my friends, and we'd catch We'd take hawks out of their nests and try to raise the babies so we could be falconers, you know. I caught a possum once and I put it in a... Boy, that was a nasty pet. I want to tell you, I let that thing go the next day. All it did was hiss and faint all the time. Some of my good friends caught a skunk and actually tamed that and made a decent little pet out of it. But anyway, like I say, my childhood was surrounded by nature And, you know, when you're connected to nature all the time, you do develop a consciousness of God. Romans describes it this way, speaking about the natural man who has had no formal education about God. It says this, What is known of God is clear to them, for God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they, people, are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. That's Romans 1, 19 through 21. Now my mom and dad and sisters did go to church some, But I think the mistake my mom made was asking me if I wanted to go. Heck no, I didn't want to go to church and sit in a chair all dressed up and listen to somebody talk. I wanted to go out and have adventures outdoors. And so I stayed home when they went. Church was close to our house. It was a little Methodist church. And I remember one at one point when I was 11 years old, I went to one of the services and actually rejected Christ because the pastor gave an altar call for people to get saved. And I remember I understood what he was asking. He was asking me to turn the rulership of my life over to Jesus. And I thought, no way, I want to retain control of my life. And so I said no to God. I officially said no to God and moved on. I realize now that God was reaching out to me way back then, but. I just wasn't about to give it up for him. And that's when I think I began to drift away from believing in God altogether. With school, with my education, came 
the influence of the world and more and more unbelief. And this was during a period of time when atheism and agnosticism were on the rise in our culture. And I bit it off and chewed it. I got to a point where I was at least agnostic, if not atheistic. I'd gone through some difficult times, and despite my wonderful childhood, I had lost sight of God altogether. Until I was 17, and I made a friend named Barb Weller at my high school. And she was a fun girl, and really a blast to be around, and we clicked with natural friendship. And one day Barb came to me and she said, you know, this church I go to, they're going to have a special speaker come in and speak for a week. And all of us in the youth group, we, well, we have this contest. Each of us has been given a pew, you know, a church bench to fill. And the kid that gets the most people to sit in their pew by the end of the week gets a prize. I don't remember what the prize was, but Barbara's my friend. And I said, oh, yeah, sure, I'll help you. I'll go and help you fill your pew. So I went that week and I sat through all those services. I wasn't moved. By then, I was too much of an unbeliever. I just thought these people that believed in Jesus were on the level of people that believed in Santa Claus. But I was helping my friend, and so I went through all the services, and I listened and had a good time, and we went out to eat pizza afterwards. So it was, you know, it was fun. But I, I had no experience with God. How could I believe in him? Seriously, that would be like believing in the tooth fairy. But I will admit this. The word of God is like a seed. Jesus said that in the parable of the sower. You know, we always use that scripture to teach about money, but it's really about the sower sows the word. It's really about the word of God. And when that word is sown in someone's heart, if the ground is fertile enough, it begins to take and to grow. And I think my curiosity about Christianity and God began to increase again. I began to hunger to know more about God, like maybe he really was real. Maybe this wasn't all just fairy tales and fantasy. Maybe there really was something worth considering here on some level. To put a name to it, I think I became a seeker. And there's an interesting scripture about being a seeker in Jeremiah 29, 13. God says this, you will seek me. And you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. Story of my teenage years, I began to search again. I began to hunt for God. And I had some Christian friends by then because Barb had other Christian friends at school. And there was a girl named Karen Swartz and there were some others. And I didn't realize at the time, but I had become their project. They really wanted to see David Stearman get saved. Consequently, during my 17th year, my junior year, they invited me to go to church camp with them. It was going to take place over the Easter vacation, which was a, you know over a week long. And we were going to go and camp, they said, and it was going to be a lot of fun and there would be speakers, but there would also be a lot of games and a lot of stuff to do. And did I want to do it? And I said, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Sounds like something fun. Sounds different. But I don't know, maybe a week before the actual church camp was to begin, I began to have second thoughts. And I thought there are other things I'd really rather be doing than some churchy thing. And so I decided I wasn't going to go until the Friday before the church camp began. When my friend Karen Swartz said to me as I was leaving school that day, hey, so am I going to see you at church camp on Sunday? And I said, no, I don't think I'm going to do it, Karen. I've got some other things to do. And I remember she looked at me in a unique kind of way and said, please go. There was just something about the sincerity in her heart, maybe, or her expression. I, I, I don't know. But I just said, okay, if you want me to, I'll do it. You know, the book of Revelation says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Interesting little verse, isn't it? That when we testify of Jesus, the same anointing comes upon us that came upon the prophets of old, like Elijah. I think now, looking back, that's what happened. It was not only Karen that was saying, please go. It was God. 
It was Jesus who was saying to me, please go. And so I went. Friends, I will be eternally grateful to Karen for saying, please go that day. I'm a Christian today and will live forever because she said that. Never be shy about speaking out for Jesus. Just a couple words can make all the difference in a person's life. Sure did in mine. So, okay, back to the story. I listened to a message on Sunday night. I listened to another message on Monday night. I listened to a message on Tuesday night. I was unmoved. I thought it was kind of interesting. They would preach this message and then they would give this like altar call thing. I still didn't really know what an altar call was, but they would ask people if they wanted to come forward to take a stand and and then people would come up there, you know. And on Wednesday night, they did the same thing. And something in the wording of the altar call, I don't know, I thought it might include me. They said, if you, the way I interpreted it, if you believe in what's good and right and God and stuff, come up here and show that you're a supporter. Basically, that's the way I understood it. And so I came up and I stood in the row. And then as they began going down the row, talking to people and praying with them, I realized that what they were really asking me to do was to become a Christian. They were asking me to become one of them, an official Christian. And I'm a teenager. I'm a little insecure and shy. And I thought, oh my gosh, what have I done? I've come forward to become a Christian. And I don't even know if I believe in God like that. And so stuck, embarrassed, I prayed. I hardly ever had prayed before, but I prayed. I said, oh God. Now, looking back, this is kind of humorous to me. Here I was praying to a God I wasn't even sure existed. But anyway, I prayed, oh God, I see what I've done. I've trapped myself. And now they think I'm going to become a Christian. So here's what I'm going to do. Okay, God, I don't even know if you're real but I'm going to go ahead and accept Jesus like they're saying. I'm going to I'm going to do this. And then, hey, if it's for real, I guess I'll know it. And if it's not, I guess I'll know that too. I prayed that. It was not a giant prayer of faith. I just said, hey, if it works, I'll know it's real. If it doesn't, I'll know it's not. So when the guy came to me, I prayed the prayer to receive Jesus. Now, again, Remember Jeremiah, he said, you'll search for me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. I realize now that's what I was doing, searching for God with all my heart. But what happened next amazed me. My world exploded. My reality exploded. God made it very, very clear that he, that this was real. I, after I began to read the Bible a little bit, I began to realize that what had happened is that I had been born again. Now, I know you might ask, how could that happen? You didn't even pray in faith. And all I can say to that is, in a way, I actually did. And God met me where I was. I prayed a prayer of faith that God would reveal himself to me. And he did. And sincerely, if there's somebody listening to this that's never been born again, being born again is not like being woke or something. It's not like understanding things you didn't understand before. It's for 100% real. Something inside of you that was dead is reborn, comes to life. I can't describe it with just regular human words because it is not a regular human thing. It is a supernatural thing. There was this guy named Nicodemus and he came to Jesus by night and he said, I just want to know if you're who you say you are. And I mean, there are evidences of it. Are you for real? Is this for real? And Jesus answered him in the strangest way. He said, truly, truly, I say to you that unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. And what he was saying is you will never understand what's going on here until you've experienced it for yourself, until you have been reborn. It's an inner thing, a spiritual reality that you have to personally experience to comprehend. 
And then he goes on to say, he goes, you know, he said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So this is not a flesh thing. This is not a natural human thing. This is a supernatural spirit thing. He said, you know, the, the wind blows and you can see what it does. You can, you can hear the sound of it or you can see it blowing through the But he said, you don't know what it is or where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Well, I'm going to tell you something, guys. It may be imperceptible and inconceivable to an outsider, but it's a very real thing to be born again. Very real, very tangible, but not something that anyone else can really describe for you. Suffice it to say that when you're born again, your world is turned upside down. And you are changed forever. Oh my gosh, y'all. I was 17 years old. And I went from being a non-Christian, non-believing doubter. I'm a missionary. I'm an evangelist. I'm a Bible teacher. All that happened in one night. This stuff is so cataclysmic. It lasts a lifetime. Anyway, I was so shaken and rattled by this experience I stayed up the next two nights. I couldn't sleep. When I finally went home on Friday afternoon, I fell in bed and just crashed at six o'clock. And I just slept through till, till Saturday morning. My whole self, my whole being had been rattled and shaken. My world view had been shaken. I just, I got up on Saturday. I just walk around thinking, God is real. God is for real. I'd walk down a road and I would see the trees and the birds and the butterflies and all the stuff I'd seen before, but suddenly it was richer. The colors were brighter. The beauty was more beautiful. Everything was different. And God, God Almighty was real. I had touched his face and I could never doubt his reality again. And to top it all off, he was now personally my friend. Now, this podcast is going a little longer than they usually do. So I'll wrap this one up quickly. This being born again thing. Wow. If you've been saved, you know what I mean. If you haven't, trust me, you want it. You can be born again and experience and know God personally. It's for real. And once you are born again, it's as powerful as you're being born the first time. You are changed forever. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful thing it is to be born again and know that you know God as your personal friend. Hey friends, as you've heard me say many times, our ministry is a missionary ministry. We teach, train, and evangelize in lots of different countries. That's why we need partners, folks who join hands with us to enable the spread of the gospel. On the donate page of davidstierman.com, there's a link that says donate here. If you tap on that, you'll have a choice to sow one time or monthly. If you feel led, choose monthly to become part of our regular partner family helping us take God's word to a needy world. Thanks for listening, and God bless you.